Okay, so uh, today's the day after I made my first three videos in this little series here. And I'm going to continue with just a few minor observations and some major pieces of, piece of information, at least from what I perceived and while I was doing just a few things in each partition today. Uh, one was to um, basically get my printers to work, two, to see if I could access the other partitions from the one I was in, and um, third, to see if I can get the GUVC viewer installed and working in those different partitions. And so, basically, if I can, uh, I consider that in, in Linux, if I can't get the GUVC viewer camera program to run or work, that for my purposes, it can't be used for this. So the alternative would be using Windows. So uh, what I'm saying also, in effect, is if you know whoever is using Linux happens to like uh, a few distributions that I'll mention. Um, they'll have no alternative but to do their camera work actually in Windows. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing mine in Linux right now, but you know, I have that choice, but I only have that choice in a few of the partitions. Okay, so um, where I left off, today I went back into Linux Mint to try to um, update my printer, see what drives I can access, install the GUVC viewer, oh yeah, check, see if I had Flash and Java, and uh, just see if, on the ones that I had time to get to, to see if, you know, the Web of Wonder demonstration for Runfield would work in, um, in Firefox. So in Linux Mint, I was happily, I, I give Linux Mint the highest mark in in the regard that it came with Java it, out of the box, came with Flash out of the box, and WebGL worked out of the box in Linux Mint. So, and it's got a better look to it, it's got a intuitive setup. To me, out of all these distributions that I'm going to talk about, Linux Mint gets the highest marks without, without exception. Um, a few I'll mention get low marks uh, for various reasons and I'm just talking about usability you know and you got to consider whether you know the, the effort is really worth it <laughs> you know in some cases Jack to, to go with this because you know to, to make a distribution if it's just not going to be usable at the end of the day and of course I have a small set of parameters here this is for doing YouTube you know broadcasts but yeah, I'm not even counting out of all the Linux distributions that are out there, um, some with more and some with less hassles involved. Um, I there's still there's the application barrier in some cases where um, some industries or some professions actually need certain apps to do their job. If they don't have them, they can't do their job. It's that simple. So I'll pick up where I left off. So that, that was basically Linux Mint. Everything was a pleasant surprise. I was able to install GUVC View fairly easily. Um, Flash and Java were already in there. Web, you know, Firefox 4 was in there. It came with it. Pretty much everything was good. I don't know if the proprietary driver is in there, but it seems to work adequately. Um, it really does. Um, I did find out, uh, going through these checks uh, just for Haiku OS Alpha 2, I'm just going to go through it quickly, uh, you know, it boots, has a graphical interface, um, has internet access, you can set an IP number, and so I think I misspoke when I said that networking is a little weak right now, what I should have said is that printing is weak, um, couldn't print at all. It, and it actually does have sound. I copied over one of my videos that I made into uh, the Haiku OS partition. It's able to access all my Razor partitions and all of my um, EX. Every one of my partitions can be accessed from Haiku. It's the only operating system that I can say can do that, um, except for um, 
Slackhorn Fedora in this case um, without much effort at all. I took the least amount of effort uh, from uh, to accomplish that. Um, but it does have sound, and it's able to play. <laughs> it's able to play these videos. Uh, it's got an installation of VLC that's been rebranded a little bit. But you can tell it's VLC when you look at it. So um, I didn't check to see what version was actually installed there, but I don't. I I'd be surprised if it was a new version, because again, I think they're going to have problems porting over apps because of you know their file system doesn't support soft links. Um, so I, and I don't know how you would do, uh, webcam captures <laughs> in, in Haiku. I, I'm, I'm just not sure. VLC is able to do it, but whether they have the drivers for the camera, I don't know. And, um, they chose the BSD license, uh, although they've, at some point, they decided they're going to start putting some GPL tools in there. Uh, they have a little command line utility, so maybe they'd be willing to, you know, install um, the driver for this camera and port it over to Haiku. I, I'd say it's feasible, but you know, I haven't tested it. Um, updates are complete and reinstalled, but the reinstalls, unless you format, don't damage any of your files or even your settings. Um, as far as I know, they don't really have a package manager, it's in design mode, and I think the person that's designing the package manager has no idea that there's a problem compiling these packages. It just assumes it's going to work. Um, so, the, the latest Firefox they have in there is a, is a ported over version of Mozilla 2. Um, it does automatically log the user in. Um, there is only discussion about having Nash work, and I'll get more into Nash when I get over to Mandrake. Um, so they don't really have a decent set of packages that you can do much with. Even the Go Be Productive that used to work in um, the last version of BEOS that was released won't even won't install in my system. Um, USB sticks work easily, quickly. Um, I didn't test the, the scanner. And, you know, root access is not tediously access, uh, not tediously restricted. You can get in there right away. Um, their window manager is adequately intuitive, but it's a little goofy. It's a re-implementation of what they did with B, and I think they had some usability. They could have made it more usable. They probably, if B was still in business, they probably would have improved upon the way the window works. I'll just say that. It's a lot like Gnome and Fedora. And as far as being able to access the files to Haiku, I, I've had, from other partitions, I've had some really mixed results that are, that I'm having trouble setting straight in my mind, and I'm, and, and and the behavior of accessing other partition is kind of, is a bit symptomatic of the inconsistency of each of the distributions uh, behavior across the whole set that I have installed here and I you know I'll get into that more um, it's I had a um, I had download downloaded at one point um, the whole package source tool set, which is huge, unzipped, <clears throat> and I, when I gave up on it, I, you know, right-clicked in the folder, sent it to the trash, but to delete all the files under the trash, it would probably take about a half an hour for, for Haiku to get rid of it. It seems that <coughs> Haiku is a little slow when it's dealing with numerous files. Um, it even slows the system down a bit, so... You know, and again, I know it's alpha software. I'm just talking about the way it's working right now. Um, and the latest, they do have, Adobe did release a version of Flash for the B system. And conceivably, although not true for Go B Productive, I, I think it's generally true for the other apps. Uh, the, this version of Flash, it's Flash 4. Um, may or may not work 
when you go to look at videos of YouTube, uh, you, you could install it as long as you were willing to install a version of Mozilla that's was ported over to the B system, Mozilla 2, and use it. But I see, you know, obviously I see security issues. Okay, the next system I want to talk about is Fedora 15, and it's turned out that it's, at the end of the day, it's it's a joke. Um, <coughs> I, I, I just, it, it's been a nightmare. Um, and Mandrake's almost its ugly, ugly twin brother, but Mandrake at least is still alive now, where, and I haven't done any updates to Mandrake. I don't know if I want to try it. I know the last time I did updates in Mandrake, I got in the same position I'm in Fedora now, and that is right now, when I boot into Fedora, all I have <coughs> is a, uh, it won't, it goes straight to init 3, it won't have a graphical user interface, and it will ask, it will ask me to supply root password for maintenance mode, and I have no idea why it wants to do that. Stardex won't work, and when it does for the short time it's up, it'll say that it could not start the D bus and there's a little button that says can I start the, the QD bus and you click on the button and it says OK X stops and then um, then it says um, start X permission denied now I don't know why that happened uh, basically I installed some additional packages in Fedora um, including to uh, to try to install some multimedia packages, the best I can get that was pre-compiled is Cheese, and I can't even get sound in Cheese. Um, I added file system tab entries for the Samba shares, never got a chance to test that. Um, I was not able to print any of my printers at all. The only way I was able to print my printer, one that I had set up, was by um, using the cat command and piping it to LPR and I get somewhat of a broken, you know, it's just text, just the printer, you know, getting the assembly of text as it arrives, it was concatenated, and printing it out on the printer, and that's all it could handle, and I did get, managed to get one printer test page to come out when I used the CUPS interface, and fortunately, at least they didn't make using the CUPS interface from localhost too tedious, and yes it is port 631, I was right. Um, the one thing that Haiku was able, that, that Fedora was able to do, that all the distributions up to this point besides Slackware was, all the rest are not able to do, or simply read the contents of my um, Haiku operating system partition with, with a B file system on there. Um, I, I'm still boggled as to how that actually happened. Um, I, you know, I could browse over to my Fedora directory and try to see what the difference is between um, you know between what what I have here in Ubuntu and what what's in my uh, Fedora, but I only really see because um, I take a quick glance at what I have in my Ubuntu here, but. You know what exactly what entry is going to allow the other systems to act just to be able to read only access my other partitions without having to put an entry in there or I don't know I did see the BEFS driver was loaded I didn't make any efforts to, to mod probe it in, in either Slack or Fedora um, my file system tab file here on in Ubuntu only has an entry for proc now on Fedora it's got sys file systems, debug file systems, and dev PTS. I don't know what those are. Um, I could look it up, but I've been using Linux for 10 years. I never even tried those things, never heard them talked about that much. But apparently one of these entries besides proc either the sysfs or the debugfs or the dev, P dev pts whatever those mean will somehow causes KDE to be able to display the contents of my haiku directory without any other file system to have entries in there seems like that could be a good thing I haven't tried it in, in Ubuntu yet here 
And uh, I don't know whether maybe uh, those entries are problematic, and that's how I ended up in the situation I was in. Maybe Fedora doesn't like to have any file system tab entries at all whatsoever. I don't know. Maybe I have any consistency between the two things. So, but right now I, I have absolutely no graphical user interface there. Now, one good thing about Fedora is is just like Mint, I guess. Yeah, out of the box, uh, Far WebGL was working with Firefox four. Package Manager seems adequate. Um, but I, I don't think I didn't even get into checking to see whether it had Java or Flash. I got locked out of the system at that point. And I moved on to Mandrake. The last thing I'm going to try to do is maybe I'll do a little update if it works is get rid of those other entries and just just stick with um, the proc sysfs, sysfs, debugfs, and devbts and see if I can boot in. But I, you know, I also changed uh, The root directory partition from you know um, dev you know ID by disk ID to you know just dev SDAA because I'm gonna remember what that is. I'm not gonna remember what that other crap is with the UUIDs and all that. There's too much to remember. That might be the problem, or it could be one of the packages that installed somehow damaged the 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 D bus whatever the hell that is you know it's all right, it was already hard enough to try to figure out how to use dev file system over here and in fact it doesn't even work right the last time I just stuck the the, the USB stick in here and tried to run a backup it didn't mount the USB drive and it filled up my my hard drive partition so no no one was able to check email which which was flat annoying and everything all the settings are exactly the same and according to the way they should be in this thing but just by moving up to OpenSUSE 11.4 I got a new problem and when it comes to security you want to be using the latest stuff but if you think that some a production system is going to start breaking down or things aren't going to work just because you move up you, you have you know you have those two things to weigh and you you know at least the damn thing works you know who knows if someone's going to hack into it? Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to move on to Mandriva before I get on my rant about my server. Um, so I, I've got Mandriva 10.02. You know, boots got a graphical user interface. You know, has uh, internet access. Um, I didn't get so far. I got fed up with Mandrake at one point. I, I didn't get so far as to add all the printers. I had no option to install the GUVC view program I'm using now. I was able to install VLC with a bunch of plugins, tons of ton of them, and LUC view. But LUC view doesn't really work as well as GUV, GUVC view. It's GUVC view is not not only a front end, but it also helps you know <laughs> rein in LUC view and make it work right without too much tinkering. Um, I'd say the package manager is not really adequate. Um, didn't Mandrake doesn't ship with Firefox 4. Um, there are some places you can get it, or if you buy the Power Pack edition, you can get it. I'm not against buying things, but if you line Mandrake up against Ubuntu or Linux Mint, it loses. You have to pay 40 bucks for something you get for free over here. Um, it doesn't log the user in automatically. And the worst part is, is there, they do have Java packages of, God, all sorts of brand, I mean, there's like four or five different, you know, Java you know, run environments or virtual engines or whatever the hell they call them uh, 
that are that are out there uh, are available that could be installed in Mandrake, but the question is, do they work? And I even had just using the OpenJDK, which was you had some of the Sun source in there, and then it went into the into the the community. There have been times where I've had issues with the sound coming through with that um, here in Ubuntu, and so I'm not really excited to not have I mean, just to be able to click on a box and actually download and install Sun Java. Now I've I've gone to the Sun it's, they, Sun provides Java for free, you know, so. Yeah, it might for my time. It might be worth thirty bucks to have someone else download Java for me and put all the files in all the right places. Because it's a bit of a complicated um, installation. The initial installation isn't hard. You can get Sun Java installed fairly easily from the command line after downloading it. But getting it to plug into your browser is a different story. You have to know where the distribution. Uh, this time wants you to put browser plugins. You know what directory? You got to really get a look around for that. And finally, when you find it and, it and it works, and Firefox is actually saying, "Hey, yeah, I got it." Um, okay, but I didn't bother with all that because I don't even have Firefox four. Um, the Flash player support is pretty bad. It's almost in Haiku land. Um, where IQ is discussing using Nash, I'll, I'll say right now it's not really a great idea. I installed Nash as it was available um, uh, from Mandrake in, in their package manager, which had a decent look to it. Although again, it's a little bit, little bit cartoonish, but it's okay. You know, it's not horrible. And I'm, again, I'm not that all that big on the way things look, but if it looks just awful like some of the gnome icons and I, I tend to really kind of shy away from it. Even this this looks kind of you know I don't really like the way it looks but once I had Nash installed uh, I went over to YouTube just clicked on the first video that my mouse pointer landed on and it said error please come back later. Try another one error please come back later. Well I guarantee you on any one of these other ones it isn't going to do that. It's, it's the way Nash was performing. I mean just the fact that the open source community has been able to develop something that can play some of these videos is a good thing but on the other on the other hand for the end user until such time as it works just as well as Adobe's Flash for our purposes the end user is not going to use it. It's that simple and so I don't, don't recommend it. Mandrake has no in-place upgrade available. Neither does Fedora, as far as I know. Um, and all these other things I didn't even test. I didn't even try putting a USB stick in there. Um, and you can't even log into root. Log into KDE is root if you wanted to. <coughs> um, that's about it for that. Now let's get to Slack for 1337. There are a lot of good things about Slackware, and I really wish that Slackware had more support. But the problem is the Slackware community is a bit stuck. Um, and they're stuck because there isn't really an organization behind it that'll, that'll say, if, if you put the software up here, it's an official repository. So, I've had GVC Viewer installed in Slackware before, and I, I'm not even too sure. There's, see the, the with Slackware either, either the guy that makes the distribution has compiled it for you, or you got to do it yourself. And it's a crap shot once you're at the point where you're compiling software. Um, it may work, it may not work, or it may work kind of okay. It may not work as well as you want it to, as is exemplified by the, you know, the compiled bits I did in the OpenSUSE <coughs> installation. Okay, the the graphical output is is just crap. 
Um, my presentations are down to a bunch of blinking screens and me talking from over there, so I'm not even doing it over there. Um, but nonetheless, um, so I looked around to see if I can get anything to find if anybody's actually compiled GUVC viewer. And you know, you look around, and none of the none of the official mirrors have GUVC view in there. You can download the source code, but you have to have port audio and FFmpeg installed. And I thought I had downloaded a version of port audio, and I thought I downloaded a version of FFmpeg from the official sites, and I thought I did the configure, make and make install, and I thought all that stuff had, had worked. And then when I went to try to compile GVC view, it said that those things weren't there. I was still missing like a live AV codec and you know some port audio too. Um, now if I was thinking I probably should have copied over those uh, compiled directories over from OpenSUSE and plunked them in my root directory in Slackware and then type make install and I probably would have had success. Um, at least as much success as I had the limit that I had in OpenSUSE and that, you know, some of the the video capturing uh, on some of the formats just didn't work right at all. Um, Slackware seemed to have not many file system tab entries at all, just a few, like proc and, you know, sysfile sys, but at the same time I was able to read all of my uh, directories just like Fedora, and so um, if I could get over to my Slackware, I might have actually be able to um, say what their magic entry was, because not only is it the least complicated set of entries, it, it provides the most access, and that has the look and feel of what, of what Slackware is really all about. Um, yeah, it's got dev PTS and proc and something called tempfs at devshm. I added a couple mount points for Suzy and Ubuntu and I'm still able to, to boot in there without any problem. It doesn't have a debug file system so it must be the thing that I'm missing and these other things is either sys file system or the debug file system to be able to um, actually it couldn't be the only commonality is dev PTS so de I guess the dev PTS entry allows you as a user to be able to mount all your partitions without having to worry about file system tab entries it'll just place a UUID in the media subdirectory on the root as far as I know I guess yeah, you know, I don't know if it has configurations or not. I, I just don't know enough about it. But the big problem was at the end of the day. I ended at the end of the, when everything's done. I th I said, well, you know what? If I'm going to use Slackware and be able to do what I want to do, I'm going to have to be able to compile these programs. I couldn't get it to compile. And I thought, well, probably the only way to really go is to get NetBSD's package source in here and bootstrap it. And then I thought about how much time that would take. To not only to download but to to unzip it's about it takes about five minutes to unzip the the base for for NetBSD's package source and in my experience it's about maybe a one in three chance to get the damn thing to bootstrap I mean you're you're lucky depending on what what snapshot you got really that, that's my opinion um, so I, I didn't go with it um, I'm pretty sure I probably would have been able to get GUVC view to, to install and a lot of other things to install, but then you have this situation where you've got apps that are already installed in Slackware plus the NetBSD stuff. You know, you have two package managers basically. And compiling software takes a long, long time, and so to have one package manager to rule them all. You have to install everything, including the KDE, which, um, which actually, yeah, I'm going to go into more in there. So I was in, 
in, into that. So I was in OpenSUSE, and at one point in OpenSUSE, I, I had made Conqueror the default file browser and not um, Dolphin. And I changed the look to, to use the um, Keramic. And I realized at that point the only thing that I really couldn't do was make icons in the desktop. And then I looked around and there was <clears throat> some post saying that basically if you um, change the view to folder view and not desktop view, you can add your icons. And guess what? I had, I have right now in SUSE a system I like to work with. So now I, I, I don't feel the need to install KDE 3 because one, I have everything I want. I have um, in, the, in KDE 4 using uh, Conqueror as the default browser, not Dolphin. Um, I looked. Um, you can right click on the folders and you can change permissions in the same manner that you could in KDE 3. And um, I was able to, to add a few links to uh, the shares that mount from the server. And so I'm fairly happy now. I'm happier with KDE than I am with GNOME. And for those reasons, because I, I like, I'm not, I'm not against using the command line, and I like using the mouse. I just like using what's most efficient in the situation, in either time. And the fact that OpenSUSE doesn't do anything to prevent the user from logging in to KDE as root, other than they used to put like a red wallpaper there to warn you to let you know that you're in there. Um, and this, they don't really give you a different look. In that aspect, I'm I'm pretty pretty happy with OpenSUSE, and it's it's I would say you know at the beginning of this presentation I said Linux Mint was ahead, but now I'm going to say that with the tweaks that I did at this point after doing all those things, uh, doing the research and just basically making two changes: one, making Conqueror the default file manager, and two. Uh, setting uh, the desktop to have folder view, which is like a weird name for for hey, change it to folder view, and now you got a fully functional desktop. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm happy with Susan in that regard. Now, now um, the last topic I'm going to go over is just this basic inconsistency that I've seen over these various distributions, and I, I don't know if it's because I don't have um, dev PTS and all these file system tab entries, but basically, you know, I, I go into Ubuntu and I see, by default, um, you know, I go down here to places and then computer and I have all these partitions show up but nothing else, right? Now on this on this one, I think I probably even at one point believed that I had to um, get to my file system tab folder. I've added nothing but the swap entry to my file systems tab file here at Ubuntu, and I can see most of my partitions, but not all of them. And the one thing I can't see is the haiku partition. Well, it's got to be that diff, uh, the sysfs entry in there. It's got to be. Um, but I bet you if I had that, I'd be able to get it. I'm mounting my Dell and my Drobo shares not by the file systems tab entry, but actually by an init script. I may end up changing that now that I know how to do it from from the guy that was in OpenSUSE. Um, <coughs> But there you are. So I have this set, of, and and then I'll you know I'll boot into, say, um, Slackware, and I can get to them all. Boot into OpenSUSE as the regular user, and only about three or four of them will light up and and show themselves. But the other ones won't. So for example, I was in OpenSUSE as a regular user, and I hadn't made any entries. Uh, to add mount points for the other partitions at all, and I had 
think I had access to my Ubuntu partition, my Windows partition, but not the Haiku partition. Why was it that? I, I have no idea. don't know why. I hadn't made any entries. And then I go into Mand Mandrake and I get a different result. So some of the partitions are available, some of them aren't. Um, all these kernels are pretty close together. They're, they're, the, the versions aren't that far apart from each other. Um, I mean, I, Ubuntu is using 2.6.38. So is Linux Mint. OpenSUSE is a little bit behind, 2.6.37. Um, Fedora is using 2.6.38. Mandriva is all the way back at 2.6.31, if I got that right. Um, Slackware is at 2.6.37, and so most of them are, in th you know, I, and I don't even remember looking at what Mandriva is able to access or not. So I don't know if it was between 2.6.37 and 38, some bug was fixed, and things are presenting itself. I certainly know that Fedora doesn't... really have a different kernel than my Ubuntu here. So it's got to be that entry in uh, the file systems tab. I guess I may as well just try to do it. To add that one entry that's also in Slackware. In fact, I probably should just look at my Slackware partition and try it now and then call it at night. K sudo to G is G edit. I don't even know if that's visible. Oh yeah, and another thing that was just kind of um, that would happen in some of these that the Linux Mint has another plus to their you know to to what I to their features is that when you go in Linux Mint, when you go into the terminal, you can actually see what's in the terminal. <laughs> it's got a white background and black letters. On some of these, like in OpenSUSE and in, in Fedora and Mandrake, they act like no one's ever really going to actually look at the terminal. It's it's absolutely unreadable. I've even made a little bit of a change to my terminal here in Ubuntu. It's like gray on black or some god awful thing like that. Let's go in here and let's see if I get any results. I already have the proc. Up there. So, you know, hopefully I'm, I'm not going to ruin this and make it unbootable after now, but, you know, let's see if anything actually shows up. And I'm, I'm cheating off my Slackware um, file system tab entries. So let's see, does it, does it make a difference here? Am I suddenly able to read my haiku? How about if I try mod probe BEFS? for that. Well. <laughs> See, I I just I don't get it. Why why is why is haiku not showing up here? It even might go to um is there some kind of secret thing that goes on inside of KDE? Is it some kind of um, free desktop org setting that's beyond um, easy interpretation? I, I just don't know. 
I did one presentation in um, OpenSUSE 11.3, and it was able to. I was able to fix my inability to see what was on the system. Now this is still coming up here in, on this system with the BEFS module loaded as an unknown file system. It's saying the file system is damaged. It's not. It's not a damaged file system. I know that. I've been able to, and if I look, if I do lsmod, list my modules, oh god, I hate this. Is it going up or down? Come on. <laughs> It's loaded, BEFS. So I, it must be one of these free desktop.org entries, and somewhere in here in the back end, has something to do with GNOME or KDA. I, 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 I just couldn't tell you. I, I don't see it here. It should have a label of Haiku OS. It's not there. You know, I don't want to have to reboot and necessarily reboot. Although I have that option, I have that luxury. At least now with Slackware, now the Fedora is just trashed out of nowhere uh, to be able to back up my Haiku partition if I want to, whether it's as the user or not. And I don't know if I need to be logged in as root, but uh, yeah, in Slackware I was both of them. I was actually uh, logged in as root, so. Uh, if I find that if I log in as root, I, those things suddenly appear, I'll do a short follow-up, otherwise I'm done. <laughs>